As I'm sure you've seen in many other YouTube videos, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is absolutely jam-packed with Easter eggs, secrets, and hidden meanings. And with the huge theorist community in the franchise, it's no surprise that everybody is on the hunt for things hidden in plain sight, whether it be the repeated foreshadowing of the yellow rabbit, or the many references to the puppet who never ends up appearing in the movie. One channel that made a video about the Easter eggs is none other than New Rockstars themselves, a channel that I am a huge fan of myself. But they did have a bit of an oopsie in their video. They said that the animatronic in the corner is actually Mr. Hippo, but that's not the case at all. It's something far more sinister, something with a much deeper connection to the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's, and something that even I was surprised was included in the movie. This is none other than Shadow Freddy. What is he doing here? Is he even a real suit? And will he have more importance in the second movie? I aim to answer all of that today as we delve deep into the rabbit hole of the movie's Shadow Freddy adaptation. Now, I appreciate that some of you may not have even played the original FNAF games, and even if you have, you may not have an encyclopedic knowledge of all the animatronics. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Shadow Freddy first appeared as a random creepy easter egg in FNAF 2, and yet he's still completely unexplained. He appears to be a recolor of Withered Golden Freddy, but it was always unclear whether he was an illusion, some kind of monster formed from the agony of the tragedies at Freddy's, or if he was an actual physical suit. And so, when he reappeared for a single frame in the teaser for the FNAF movie, it was kind of a big deal. Obviously, the movie would be taking place in a separate continuity from the games, but that doesn't mean we can't use elements from it to understand more about the world and the science within. One question that has always been associated with these shadow animatronics is who possesses them, because clearly these are important characters with extremely different designs from the other animatronics. Throughout the years, there have been plenty of theories. Maybe they are the victims of the original simultaneous Springlock incidents, Maybe they are just entities birthed by the oversaturation of William Afton's agony. Well, in the movie, we actually get to see who gets stuffed in this animatronic. It's Max. Let's take a step back. Max, as a character, is actually quite interesting, despite her not having a huge number of scenes in the movie. Her inner conflict is intriguing because she seems quite reluctant to do anything against Mike. And, of course, when she does, she suffers the consequences. Max also uses her job as Abby's babysitter to find things against Mike to win Aunt Jane's custody over Abby. It's almost like she looks like a friend, but is actually stabbing you in the back. A shadow, if you will. And I think a lot of the symbolism and figurative visualizations are intentional here, and definitely key to pointing out. You'll especially see in a minute how all of this does tie into Shadow Freddy and the potential relevance to the story. So we see this gang get killed off one by one, and I'll admit that this whole scene was amazing. It all flowed so nicely, and it was actually really cool seeing the animatronics actually killing people. It ends off with Max's death, but before we get there, there's a few details that we should notice. Remember that Max was actually led to her death by one of the ghost children, but she wasn't pulled away with force and she wasn't tortured. She was lured. One of the creepiest moments in the movie for me was when the child said, like it's all a game of hide and seek. But notice the first line that he says. <laughs> hey, follow me. Follow me. Now, where have we heard that one before? We actually get the same exact line within the FNAF 3 End of Night minigames, famously titled the Follow Me minigames. And that's interesting to me as the thing that you follow in that minigame is none other than Shadow Freddy himself. It's a great connection. Let's take a second to remind ourselves what this minigame is about. After every night in FNAF 3, we are given these Atari-style minigames, which I'd say the movie confirms to be the memories or dreams of memories by the historic agony here. More on that in a separate video if you want that. In these minigames, we start out as one of the animatronics, and our mission is to walk around the pizzeria following Shadow Freddy. The issue is that he goes into a room that the animatronics are unable to, leading us straight into Purple Guy's trap, of dismantling all of the animatronics. That is until the souls roam free and we finally see what Shadow Freddy was leading us to. 
the death of the purple guy. And as the ultimate guide confirms, Shadow Freddy's aim was to help the children, which ultimately he ended up doing successfully. Also remember that the character encyclopedia has a strange rhetorical question asking whether Shadow Freddy will be important in the ongoing mythology of the FNAF series. That sounds like a bit of a wink wink and a nudge nudge to me. Now we look back at the movie and Max is killed by the Bite of 2000, at least that's what I'm calling it. But there's an even more hilarious detail to note here that I'm 95% sure was done intentionally. The fact that, sure, Max was killed by regular Freddy in the part and service room, but from our view, she was a shadow killed by a shadow of Freddy. It reminds me of the FNAF 4 minigames in which Fredbear and Spring Bonnie both casted shadows on the wall on a completely different screen. This was put here, yes, because naturally under the lights, shadows of these characters will be casted, but also as a reference to these characters and their potential relations to the Springlock animatronics. If not, there would have been no reason to put the shadows there in the first place. Likewise, you could argue that only the shadow was shown because otherwise it would be too graphic, and while I do agree, I still think that the symbolism is at play here to show Max's transition from her reality and everything she is aware of to nothing but a shadow in a dark room at Freddy's. Meaningless. So that's all great symbolism and it was executed very well in the movie, but what does that mean for theories and predictions? Well, I for one have a big prediction to share with you today. Remember that Max feels different from the other characters around her. She's more complex. They could have put Carl in the suit or Hank, or they could have even obscured the body, but they put Max in there. As a previous babysitter, I believe that she is going to find herself in this animatronic body and take on her duty of looking out for the ghosts of the children around her. I believe she will literally be the missing children's babysitter. And with many hints of the puppet arising in the next movie, I think it would be very appropriate to bring in Shadow Freddy too. We never actually see this shot in the movie, but he looks possessed. It's actually really creepy imagery. I think that the next movie could have quite a large focus on finding Garrett, who I believe to be possessing the puppet, stopping Afton as Springtrap from his evil plans, and overall, helping the kids come to peace. And while I don't think that a happiest day will happen just yet, I think there's a fire burning in the distance, and it could come up in the next movie. Shadow Freddy's part in all of this? Helping the children, and maybe even guiding Mike to his long-lost brother and reuniting them. But all of that is very hypothetical, and instead of talking about this for hours on end, I want to hear what you think in the comments below. I have a few other topics to talk about concerning the FNAF movie, but I'd also love some of your suggestions. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for free today. I really appreciate you all, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.